The Chemical Warfare Board at Edgewood Arsenal, Maryland, is conducting tests to determine the relative merit of white phosphorus and high explosive filled 4.2 inch chemical mortar shells for producing casualties. White phosphorus is a wax-like substance which bursts into flame and burns when in contact with the air. In bulk, it is normally stored under water. When loaded into bombs, or grenades, or shells, and sealed from the air, it is very satisfactory in storage. When white phosphorus burns, it gives off a dense white smoke and generates intense heat. It melts as it burns and small pieces tend to stick to the surface they strike. This picture is of an accidental casualty and shows the effect of phosphorus on flesh. Phosphorus burns are very deep due to the intense heat generated and are therefore slow healing. These burns were produced through a regulation uniform with a piece of phosphorus about the size of a match head. German regulations were consulted and a defensive sector for one platoon is laid out according to Nazi doctrine. Foxholes were dug into which are placed mannequins dressed in salvage clothing and steel helmets as a means of determining what might happen in battle. Members of the 5th Chemical Weapons Company, Colored, which prepared the positions and fired the problem, do their best to add realism. The 4.2 inch chemical mortar shell holds 7 and 1 half pounds of white phosphorus. The number of white phosphorus shells it would take to build up and maintain a smoke screen on this area for 18 minutes are fired. This is estimated by the infantry board as sufficient time for our infantry to advance from 1,200 yards to within 300 yards of the position, at which time fire has ceased to allow the smoke to thin out for the assault. Under the wind conditions that prevailed, 48 rounds were fired. The particles of phosphorus lose their velocity very quickly and fall at a steep angle, which makes it effective against targets which are dug in but do not have overhead cover. Medical officers from the Medical Research Laboratory at Edgewood Arsenal, who are familiar with the degree of injury inflicted by various sizes of phosphorus burns, as well as gunshot wounds, classify the casualties as probable death, severe, or light casualties. Only those which are considered severe enough to warrant evacuation are counted as casualties. targets were numbered, and burns are scored and classified. Of the 50 figures representing a platoon deployed and dug in, 20 figures were burned with phosphorus sufficiently to cause death or require evacuation. The same number of high explosive shells are then fired from the same mortar position at dummies in the same foxhole. The 4.2 inch chemical mortar shell holds seven pounds of high explosive. The fragments of high explosive shell have a higher velocity than the particles of phosphorus and therefore have greater range, which makes the effective diameter of the burst much greater. However, due to this greater velocity, the angle of the fall is not so steep and the foxhole offers better protection. Again, hits are scored and classified. high explosive, 
12 figures of the 50 figures were hit in a manner which would probably have caused death or required evacuation. Against personnel who are dug in and without overhead protection, this test showed that white phosphorus filling is more effective than high explosive filling for the 4.2 inch chemical mortar shell. The targets are now changed to represent an infantry platoon in the attack. About a third of the figures are staked up to represent men advancing in a crouch, while two thirds are in the prone firing position. 48 rounds of white phosphorus are again fired at the 50 figures, which now take up less frontage, but which occupy greater depth. After checking the results of this test, it was found that 38 figures had been burned sufficiently to have caused death or to have required evacuation. However, had the targets been soldiers rather than mannequins, the casualties probably would not have run so high, as a man in the open, when hit by burning phosphorus in some instances, can hold his clothing away from himself until he cuts the burning part out or can remove the garment altogether, thereby either preventing or reducing the severity of the burn. This is not true in foxholes, due to restriction placed on movement and further to the fact that most burns in foxholes are received on the back. The final phase of the test is firing the same number of high explosive filled rounds at the figures in an attack formation. After checking the casualties from this phase of the test, it was found that the high explosive shell proved its effectiveness against figures which were not protected from fragments by being in foxholes, as the count showed that 32 figures were hit. Therefore, against personnel who are not protected by foxholes, the test showed that high explosive and white phosphorus are comparable casually producing fillings in the 4.2 inch chemical mortar shell. There wasn't enough left of that little yellow so-and-so here, Ahito, to pick up. Benito here seems to have lost an argument with a good-sized shell fragment. That seems to be fitting for Adolf. He's sitting on a hot seat these days and it's going to be hotter. The final evaluation of the test showed that white phosphorus and high explosive as fillings in the 4.2 inch chemical mortar shell are comparable for producing casualties on men in the open, while white phosphorus is greatly superior to high explosive on men in foxholes without overhead cover. Therefore, it is concluded that since generally speaking, smoke is undesirable in a defensive situation, that pending the initiation of chemical warfare in this war, field commanders should employ chemical units attached to their organizations to fire white phosphorus to support the attack, thus providing both a smoke screen and superior casualty producing filling against dug-in targets, and that in defensive situations, chemical units should be employed to fire high explosives.